You know, one of my biggest bugbears with social media is that everything has to be easy. Five easy ways to do this, four easy ways to do that. I'm not going to give myself a free pass because I've been guilty of it myself. But whatever happened to doing something hard to get better results. Today, we're going to throw easy out the window and we're going to actually do something hard. I'm going to show you how to level a hollow in your lawn without any top dressing, just tools. Something that you'll have never seen before, but I learned at MySchool College and we're going to get great results by doing it the hard way. So let's crack on. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to fix this hollow that we've got here. You can't really see it, but I'll show you up close now and you can get a better view of what we're dealing with. Now, what happened was when I first arrived here 23 years ago, there was a cherry tree in this spot. Now, that just perished very quickly after I turned up. I don't think it was anything to do with me, but it was on its way out anyway. And then when we dug it out, we found it was very clay and it wasn't that much soil for it to grow in. So we think it just kind of hit the clay and perished. Now, what we did was we dug that out and we made a massive area like that, made it even bigger and put like loads of nice new soil in there. And we put a lovely Rabinia Frisia aurea in and it was absolutely gorgeous. In the winter, when the leaves went from yellow to orange, it was spectacular. But after about five or six years, maybe, maybe a little bit more, it just started to deteriorate and I think what happened was the roots hit again that clay because it had outgrown what we'd put in so we dug it out and we filled this area in I think we just got some of the old turf from a place nearby which is really rubbish stuff and it just blends in perfect here and as you can see now it just blends in and then over time the soil that we put in there has just sunk a little bit because it was quite a big hole and we just ended up with a bit of a hollow. So what we want to do is we want to raise this lawn up and what we're not going to do is we're not going to just throw a load of soil in there and throw some seed down for three reasons. One, the customer's going to come back and go, why is there a big patch of soil on my lawn? Two, when it grows, it's going to come through with the new seed and it's going to look really odd because we've got this lovely patch of green grass which isn't going to blend in with the rest of the lawn and it stops us from getting on with any renovations that we want to do and three we're not going to do it because if we bury that lawn underneath soil all that grass under there is going to die which is going to end up releasing ethylene as it perishes and then all that gas is going to get stuck below and when our new roots hit it it's not going to like it very much so we're going to do it the hard way and we're going to lift this existing bit out chop off the bottoms with our turf box which i'm going to show you in a minute so we can get it really uniform and level and then afterwards, I guarantee we'll be able to go over that with a scary fire and it won't damage it whatsoever because we're going to take a big chunk of soil with it. So let's crack on. OK, so before we start digging out the hollow, I want to make myself an area around it so I know that I'm not going too far and doing needless work in terms of digging out an area that isn't actually sunken. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure out a perfect square just so it goes in our box OK, because our box is square, so let's make sure we do it right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out a perfect square and we're going to do that using Pythagoras' theorem, which is 3, 4 and the diagonal would be 5. So that can be 30, 40, 50, 300, 400, 500, whatever centimetres, metres if you've got a field that you want to do, that's fine, the zero's irrelevant. But the logical thinking would be that you can do then 9, 16, 25, but it doesn't work like that, that doesn't work. If you wanted to do the next one up, you have to do 5, 12 and that diagonal will be 13 so that's just something to bear in mind so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how we do that something i learned at my school college and i've posted a picture now i did mark out a football pitch for a customer at the time he's a good friend now we're on the quiz team together uh, and we marked out a football pitch for his son's 11th birthday about well, 2011 it was. Uh, so I went to Rigby Taylor and bought some line marking paint and I painted all that on with a hand brush and string lines. It was difficult because the ground was so undulated, but I think you'll agree it looks fantastic and Peter, who it was for, was really impressed. So what we do is, I put this in as our line. You need like a constant line, which is your baseline to work off. So that's this one. So what we do is, I'll just show you up close now. So for this example, we're going to do 30, 40, 50. So I'm just going to do 30 there. I'm just going to put a little marker on the inside or on the outside even. I'm going to make this one 40. We'll put it there. Now, if that's a right angle, this distance here should be 50. So let's have a look. 
as you can see, that's bob on, that's 50. So we know that right angle is absolutely spot on. So what we need to do now is just recreate that all the way around and then we've got our perfect square. Okay, so we've just marked out our area that we want to do. I've got all right angles. Now there's one more test that you can do just to make sure it's totally square. Now I'm not saying yours will be square, it might be rectangle, but all your corners will be square. You don't want to look like a rhombo. So you can measure the diagonal to diagonal. So I've got 162 there. Now if it is square, I should have 162 here as well. I've got 162 both, we know that's square, so we know now we can get on with digging this area out. Okay, so the next tool we're gonna to need is the half moon, also known as an edging tool. We're gonna to cut around the outside, and then we're gonna divide it into segments. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide it this way into four. I've deliberately made this 100 centimeters, so that we can split it into 25s, so we'll have four of those. That's 28, so I'll be able to get them in there at 25, and then we'll do the same the other way and then we'll be able to then start leveling this off, fill in the bottom what we're gonna do, and then this is gonna be looking a million dollars. So let's crack on with that. So first of all, I'm just gonna make some little markers. So I know that's a hundred, so I'll just do a thing at 25, this little stone will do. 50, 75, and I'll go around the other side. Twenty-five, fifty, seventy-five. Perfect. So what I'll do now is I'll just gauge that just by eye. It doesn't matter. You could put a string line up if you wanted, but I'm not going to do that. So what we'll do is we'll just cut around the perimeter. That's the outside done. I'll just do the inside. Yeah, it's not overly hard work, this. It's just harder than filling it in with soil, but I guarantee you, we'll get miles better results at the end. Let's see, it's all good and well just throwing soil on, but we'll make it look worse in the long run. So why would you want to do that? And then I'll do the other way, and then I'll see you back, and we'll have the turf box in our hand. Okay, so that's all marked up and ready to come out. Now it's important that we remember where they go. So we can either work left to right, right to left, but just always remember where the first one goes. And then you can just park up next to it. And I'll, when I've dug one out, I'll transfer it over to the board, put it upside down, and then work back on myself. So we get to the end, and then we'll start filling it in. But the first one's always the hardest, because you've no leverage, you've just got things in your way you've got the turf edge and you're trying to get it out without doing any damage so let's have a look so this one's is that it's a brick already or something so we'll see how we get on good using a shovel like I think it's got a square edge so what we're going to remember is that this side has to go back in here so when we flip it over it's not going to be the same so in actual fact, just so I don't get mixed up, because I'm liable to do that, I'm just going to put it down like that, and then we'll do each one individually. The same again. Once I get this row out, it'll be a lot easier. Because then I can just dig the others out. 
So I'm trying to take as much as I can without disturbing the turf, because this turf doesn't actually know it's been taken out. So I think this is the best way to do it. If I had some marker paint with me, I could have just put a little squirt on and that would have just let me know where I could actually take the string line out now. I'm being a bit thick. So we'll just take these out. Put that over there. It's not all going to fit on, but that's okay. One more there. Easy does it. We'll just put that one there. So I know that goes back like that. Just tidy up these edges as well. And it'll go back in. Perfect. You see already there's loads of stones and whatever else is buried under there. So what I'll do is I'll just be able to do then get underneath it and just slide it under without doing any damage to the edges. Just work back on myself. Well I'll take them out as I was getting them out before. And it starts again. So I'll get this one out now. Remember, I'll put that one there, like that, and then all that there come out. So I'll crack on, get everything out, and then I'll join you back up when we're going to use the turf box. ready to show you my turf box rig this up at home it took me 10 minutes it's one two three four five six pieces of wood four of which are the same size that one that one that one and that one and then these two have to have two extra widths on just so you've got something to screw into and what I've also done is I've got a spur piece to put in there just in case some of these pieces are actually not as deep as that because it would just fall in otherwise so just to raise it up but I'm confident some of the ones from the outside are going to need going in there and they will level off nice just put these tire, um, <coughs> tile edges on just so my saw doesn't dig in to the wood and what we had at my score these for we had these when we were doing this but they had these double-ended um, blades which were like half moons but really long with two wooden handles on and you went like that but I haven't got one of those. Now what this is going to do is it's going to mean we can put those turbs back all uniform so that we can our level is created underneath and then when we're finished we won't have to be hitting it with a spade to get it nice and level. We can work out our height of the depth of that with what we're going to backfill it with. I'm not going to use topsoil, I'm just going to use gravel today because there's that much soil attached to these. Gravel will do absolutely fine. It'll actually give us a bit of drainage as well. So let's do our first piece remembering. So what I'm going to do is that side there is for that side there just so we know where we are so that's this side so i'm going to mirror as we go in fact i'm going to turn that round like that and then this side is like that and then we flip it upside down you can see now we're above where we need to be so i can just get my saw i'll flip it up right against there and literally we just go in level with the wood and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw that back in there and then all our pieces might take a few attempts just to get it really right but if you look at that now all nice and uniform so we can put that back in the hole in a sec. Okay, so we're ready to go back in with that piece. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to measure inside here. Now that is 10 centimetres. So what I need to do now is put my back fill in and get this to 10 centimetres. Which on this piece, I think we're going to be more or less right with where it is at the minute. You see that's just about 10. 
So I'll just do a trial fit. It's a bit of a bit of a stone there, which I'm going to try and get out actually, just to make it a bit easier. There you go. I thought it was a bit bigger than that, so I didn't bother, but it's not. Oh, there you go. Nice one. Right. So we can get that back in now. If we put it in there like that, we can see that it's a little bit too low. So what I can do is I can get some of the gravel. Just put that back in. And we can just keep going until it's right. So I just put a little bit more in. It's just level that, but we just want to do, just want to tamp it down a little bit. We can just get our little shovel and go like that. And what we're going to do now is carry on that good work all the way along. And then that will be nice and level and that hollow will have gone. And afterwards, even though the lawn's a bit wet, we'll get the scarifier out just as a test run. And I'll show you that you can do all that and scarify after the lawns up to level, no top dressing, no seed. And then when this lawn is looking right, it's going to be really consistent. That's how you level a hollow. Bit messy, I know, but time of year, absolutely chucking it down at the minute. If I don't get this done now, I'm not gonna be able to do it just because we've got so much to do. So this is a lot I can get away with because it's so much damage anyway, and we're gonna be in so much to it. This is just like the tip of the iceberg, really. So we can get away with it today. So you see now, we've raised that hollow up. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a plank and I'm just gonna settle it down a little bit just so it's nice and even. We'll tidy up and then I'll run the scary fire over it just to show you that that's nice and settled in there because we've got a nice bit, bit of root with it as well. So let's go and get that done and then let's tidy up. So yeah, so we're gonna just run a plank along it and that'll just compact a little bit and then shouldn't really sink anywhere. So we can see by just putting a plank on it that there's no hollow anymore. So, a job well done. Very hard work, I'm actually boiling. Could take my jacket off, but I've not got a corporate sweater on today, so I felt a bit of a, uh, I don't know, a bit casual, because I've not got my hoodie on. They've all faded or got iron stains on, so they're not looking very nice, so I need to get myself some new ones. So I've just got a, a normal hoodie on today. If you're wondering why I'm not taking my jacket off. I feel a bit of a fraud if I don't have my corporate badge on. So that's that, and there's a few leaves there. But yes, yeah, so I'll get tidied up, and then we'll run the scary fire over it. Look at that. Okay, so just gonna show you up close. You can see we've been, because you've got the lines, it all went back in, no more hollow anymore. So when we come to top dress this and overseed it, we've got a nice consistent lawn still, just without a hollow in it. So now I'm gonna show you that you can now go over that with the scary fire. No BS on this channel. That's how it's done. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this one. So that's how you level up a hollow without top dressing. Let's just have a recap what we did. We marked out the area that we were gonna start digging out. We string lined it. We worked out a three, four, five, and how to do a square or a square area. We dug that out. We put it through our turf box. 
put it back in with some gravel underneath so it's nice and level and that's the end result and then we scarified it just to show you that that weight is all important that if we just just to turf it or just take a little slither off it would have ripped up in the scarifier and it would have looked an absolute mess so we got away with it i think looks a mess anyway but like i said before this area is going to be getting so much work done to it this is just the tip of the iceberg so if you want to see more lawns being done up like this so they look like this this and this throughout the year and join us next time on daniel Ibert lawn expert see you soon